Hi, I'm Eric Dahlstrom, and I thought we would take this chance to talk about the amazing uh, International Space Station LEGO model and learn a little bit about the International Space Station. Uh, 30 years ago, I, I worked on the design of the space station, uh, working with a team at uh, NASA Langley, where we had a chance to go through uh, five redesigns of the space station and uh, work on the conceptual design, early early conceptual design. And so uh, uh, I really wish we had a Lego model at that time. It would have been so great to working with NASA uh, and looking at all the different options. But uh, so to me, it's it's wonderful to see it uh, represented in, in as a Lego model. Um, right now, I, I'm in New Zealand with uh, my wife and we're working on uh, uh, helping the develop the space economy in New Zealand. Um, we'll have uh, I'll have more resources for in the comments uh, in this video uh, where you can learn more about the space station and and what we're doing in New Zealand, for example. Um, so uh, anyway, if you're just starting on this model, uh, it's a complicated one. It's 860 pieces or something like that. It's it's all sorts of little tricks of putting the structure together and everything like that. And if you've uh, finished the model, congratulations. It's really complicated. Um, uh, and I, I really, uh, I like the way that the instruction booklet has information about the, the person, the Lego fan that first proposed this model, um, uh, Christopher Rouge, um, and, uh, and then the Lego team uh, that helped uh, turn this model into, uh, into a, product that we can uh, we can get so that's uh, I think it's they've done a great job uh, uh, all sorts of little tricks and and acknowledgements to the representing the real uh, International Space Station so first off what is the International Space Station it's it's a uh, been up there for uh, 20 years uh, it build gradually uh, assembled just like Lego model uh, uh, with little pieces being added and um, and right now, uh, it can. It typically has uh, six astronauts and cosmonauts on board. Right now, it has three, uh, and uh, it's it's orbiting the Earth um, every ninety minutes. Uh, and so, because it's moving at eight kilometers a second, uh, it's in an orbit. It's actually in in free fall. So it, there's uh, even though it's within the gravitational field of the Earth, it's actually uh, people inside are floating. Uh, as a, uh, uh, they don't feel any gravitational acceleration, so they're they're floating inside the this as they live inside the, and work inside the space station. So when you look at this model, what what do you see? First off, you see the the this uh, truss, which is a uh, hundred meters uh, across, the size of a of a football or soccer soccer field. Um, and it has uh, these big solar arrays sticking out, and then uh, and then in the, the the modules where the people live are are these little round cylinders here um, with the Japanese and European and U.S. parts, and then the Russian parts back here in the back. And this model is really nicely done because it has even some of the newer uh, modules that have been added. Uh, and the airlock over here and things like that. So uh, one thing that the the that's a key about the space station is that it uh, uses these solar arrays to generate uh, uh, 400 kilowatts of power, and um, they they try to always track the sun. And so as the the station is moving this direction, that's forward over there, going eight kilometers a second that way, and uh, as it orbits the Earth, um, the the solar rays rotate backwards like this, tracking the sun. And so they, it, it, it's like a pat, paddle wheel that rotates backwards. And so these, these make one full rotation every 90 minutes. So it's sort of a motion sort of like the, uh, uh, the minute hand on an on a analog clock uh, that goes around once an hour. This goes around once every 90 minutes. And it's kind of clever that the, uh, uh, that the Lego designers added a 
this orange backing of this. There's not really, it's not actually, the solar rays aren't actually painted orange like that, but it, when you see the sunlight going through the thin solar rays, it looks orange in the back. And so that's a, a clever nod to reality there. So that, that rotation of the solar rays every, once every 90 minutes is the uh, alpha joint um, here. And then the, uh, because the, the orbit is in one plane on, around the Earth, and the sun is, uh, during the pinning on the season, is off to one side. That's where you, all the solar rays are tilted over to look at the sun uh, uh, with the beta joints. And so these are all the beta joints uh, on each solar array. And then each solar array needs its own uh, solar radiator uh, while it's generating power, which it tries to keep in the shade like that. And then the, the main, uh, for the main electrical power system, for the space station that has these big radiators and they try to always angle so that they're perpendicular to the sun so they're in uh, the only one edge is in the sunlight. The, the Russians had a different philosophy they they had solar panels for every main module that they had uh, launched and uh, but it's only when so they were very useful um, when they were first uh, the first core pieces of the space station um, being the Russian F, uh, FGB module, Zarya, and the, and the um, service module, which is like a version of the Mir-2 space station. Um, and uh, so they provide their own solar power while these other ones were being added over the years. Uh, but now it's, both systems are, are connected, and uh, it's, there's been a number of times when it's been uh, the redundancy of having a complete Russian system and a complete U.S. operating uh, system. Uh, one has supported the other, depending on if there was a failure in one or the other. So uh, the so you you see so the the pressurized modules are down here with the U.S. node and, and the. Japanese part and the European part. And so if you picture, it's very much like uh, assembling your, your Lego model, mod, is that uh, these parts arrived, you know, this part arrived from Japan, got launched in Florida and, and attached. This was, was built in, this one was built in, in Europe. Um, and some of these modules, uh, you know, like this one was launched from, from Russia and from Kazakhstan with the Russian launch site and uh, and met with the uh, existing parts. So these parts were were uh, added very much like uh, a Lego model illustrates. Uh, most of the uh, the parts on the U.S. side came up to the uh, the space shuttle docking here and were assembled using this this robot arm. And uh, and in fact. Um, when we were designing the space station, we thought that one of the early pieces would be this this uh, window down here, the uh, the cupola, uh, which is where you see a lot of the photos of the of what space station looks like, and we thought that would be early added early on, but it was actually added almost at the end. And so for most of the time, the the astronauts were assembling these parts using robot arms and using just remote TV monitors to to figure out how to uh, assemble these things. And then also the astronauts would go out on EVA to make the connections out here. So um, if you imagine how hard it was to put your uh, parts together, trying to do it with just this robot arm, uh, trying to build your Lego parts that way would be really tr tricky. But that's what happened in real life with the uh, over the past 20 years. Uh, so you have... Um, uh, one one challenge if, of making this model is to look at the mo is to make it exactly like the instructions, and that's it's really good if you can do that. It has um, you know a very accurate representation of all the attached payloads and the uh, uh, and all the different aspects of the uh, attached payloads on the modules and the Japanese module and things like that. But um, but also keep in mind that as a space station designer. Um, you can actually, you know, think about moving these things around and that um, and the module pattern is just as it exists right now, but you could actually picture what it would be like if you add more modules out here or or move things around. In fact, 
in our at the uh, NASA Langley office, we actually studied um, what it would be like to build a big structure down below like this and assemble vehicles to go to the moon down here. So this this giant uh, black base that's just to hold up the module is actually a good representation of what we had for a lunar vehicle processing facility. Uh, so uh, so it's it's quite appropriate to, for you to to uh, use your imagination and see what would change. Like we used to study, you know, what would happen if we added more power out here or more modules this way, and things like that. So, so this is great raw material for imagining what you could do with your own design of a space station. Because the, um, even though we had, you know, several waves of, of design of space activities, we're entering a new phase where, where there's, opportunities for lots of designs for space hotels or lunar uh, space stations or or uh, no one has ever made an artificial gravity station that that flips end over end to provide gravity inside and so there's I think we'll be seeing a lot of of new opportunities in, in uh, of constructing things in space in the future um, so uh, one thing that I worked on uh, in the conceptual design is was a uh, was a docking connector between the U.S. part and the Russian part, which also was useful for. I mean, this is representing the Soyuz vehicle, uh, useful for where a, a Soyuz vehicle might attach. And uh, in some ways, it was a. It had to be like an a, a well, sort of like a, a plug adapter for um, between uh, the US side and the, and the Russian side. And except a big plug adapter that you can crawl through like a, with a tunnel inside. And so we had a, uh, we had a, uh, this study from years ago um, and it had a uh, design of a, um, of a connector between the, the US side and the Russian side in different size um, uh, for this tunnel. And I think it's really funny to me that, that all this work, you know, we did some initial work and then there were hundreds of people that did detailed design on this. And all of that, all that work came back to this one, the tiniest piece, the tiniest piece of the space station we had hundreds of people working on the design. And so uh, I feel really proud of that, <laughs> contributing to that little piece, but it just gives you an idea for the scale of this International Space Station program when you can have hundreds of people on the working on the tiniest piece of this. So, uh, so once again, we uh, there's so much to to learn about every little part of this. You know, this particle detector, this uh, the Z1 truss, the communication systems, the the uh, all this. Uh, the Bigelow inflatable module that's made out of Kevlar. It's, um, there are all these uh, amazing uh, aspects of, of living and working and we're the space station, International Space Station. And I think there's, uh, it's just the beginning of opportunities. Uh, we're gonna be seeing a lot more of activity in space. And uh, so uh, follow your interest and your dreams and uh, and use this model to inspire things that you may see in, or you may yourself design in the future. Right, thank you.